What's up, Amazon sellers? Did you know you can find lots of deals online with good profit and a good ROI? But the real question is, does it actually sell? In this video today, I'm going to share with you three ways on how to estimate sales velocity for a product per month on a live screen share. Stay tuned. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon doing online arbitrage for the last five years. Now in the UK, I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller, check this out. And in the USA, I'm a six-figure Amazon seller, check this out. Now hopefully in the near future, we're gonna expand into another marketplace. And if you're interested in learning how I've done it, what I'm doing going forward, and do make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Well, first things first, number one, I'm gonna talk about why it's important to estimate the sales velocity of a product. Number two, I'm gonna talk about about three ways to estimate product sales and we'll do it on a live screen share. And then finally, number three, I'll share some top tips and tricks with you that you should consider when doing sales estimation. Let's get started. First things first, why is it important to estimate the sales of a product? Let's say, for example, right now you found a great product and you're going to make, I don't know, $50 profit. Wow. And you're going to make an ROI of over 100%. So you're making your money back. That's absolutely incredible. And that's after all fees. Now, of course, you're going to be happy because this deal is great with a great profit and a huge ROI. But what if I told you that this product has never actually sold and has zero sales? Or if this product has only two sales per month with 100 people on the listing, that means if you buy this product today, it might take you 50 or 51 months to get the product sold, which is absolutely horrendous. Now, the question I'd ask is, are you still thinking about buying and selling this product? And do you still think it's a good deal? Probably not. If you sell a product which has never been sold before or has really low sales, chances are that even if it looks profitable, you'll never actually get to see that profit. And what we've got to understand is that to say when you buy a product to resell it and it looks amazing, you don't actually make the money until it's sold, even if it has good profit on paper. Now, I mentioned it earlier, I talked about lots of sellers and that can even slow down the velocity of sales that you have. So while it might have sold in the past, if you've got 50 sellers on a listing, that means actually, while we might make profit, it might be in a couple of years time, which is certainly a really bad return on an investment because hey, I'm not holding on to my inventory that long. So quite simply, no matter how good the product is and how much profit it's gonna make and how good the ROI is, if the product is not a good product sales velocity wise, and it's really a bad product and a bad deal. Now, always remember that a high profit and a high ROI means nothing if it's not selling well. So the next time that you are looking for products online to actually say sell on Amazon, make sure to include sales velocity in your considerations aside from just profit and ROI. Now, the one thing I do need to say is that on Amazon, they don't disclose the exact sales information of a product. This information we understand that we really use is only an estimation based on their sales rank. Now, you might be asking, what is sales rank? Well, quite simply, Amazon ranks all the products it has in each category based on how they're performing, i.e. like number one, number two, number three in that category. Now, for us, obviously, if you think about a product, if it's product number one, it's going to be the number one best-selling product. And number two will be the second best-selling product and so on and so on. And obviously, you can kind of guess which one's better by the closer to one it is in the rank for that category. Now, quite simply, when we're looking at, should we say, sales velocity, sales volume, we're using that sales rank number and doing an estimate of it to try and understand what's selling the most. Now, to give you an idea of what sales rank is and where you can find it, let me share my screen with you now and I'll jump on the computer and we'll show you exactly where to find this sales rank number so you can kind of get an idea when you're looking at any product listing. Okay, so here we are into a product that I searched for previously and it, you know, it's like a Star Wars uh, Lego product. Hey, pretty good product. So if we just scroll down, what we're going to do is kind of come down a bit further. Don't worry about anything you don't really notice or maybe that add-on there. What we're going to come down to is, get down there, it's this section here. This is called the product information section. Now on here, quite simply, we've got lots of information about the product, you know, item, the dimension, weight, country of origin, ASIN, etc. And it has what we known as here, best sellers rank, or sales rank as we call it. Now you can see right here, it's saying it's nine, or number 975 in toys and games. So it's the 975th best selling product in toys and games. And the one thing you want to think about whenever you're looking at this is always you'll see next to it, it'll say like, see top 100 in a category and always look at that rank. We can see here there's two, like oh, it's number four in toy stacking block sets. Don't worry about that. Just look at the one where it says 
see top 100 in something that will change depending on the category. You can see right here, it's saying it's a 957. What does that mean? Well, it means quite simply have all the products in the toys and games category. There's a lot, by the way. This is the 975, sorry, 975th best selling product. So there's only like 974 which sell better than this product in that category. So I'd probably guess that this product sells pretty fast. Question for you guys today, I'm talking about sales estimation. I'm gonna give you three ways to check, but I wanna ask you, how are you estimating sales? Let me know in the comments down below, how are you estimating sales? Right, that leads me nicely onto my second chapter, and that's the three ways to estimate product sales. Let's jump on the computer now and actually go through all of these and talk to show you what they are, what they look like and how they work. So jump on the computer now. Okay, so first things first, I just loaded up this computer, you should load up this web page now, and it's a ASIN that I've used for example. Now, first things first, what we are going to use is the tool. So on the left-hand side, you'll see a tool here called Seller Amp SAS, and it's a calculator tool. Now, there are many tools online that you can use to estimate your sales, and basically what these tools do is they give you a number, which is your sales estimation, and you can see mine is written here, estimated sales 12 per month, and it will give you that number, um, which is based off their calculations, and generally speaking, they'll be using that sales rank that we looked at earlier to do that. Now, there are lots of tools like, you know, Selleramp, SAS here, FBA Multitool, Bybot Pro, and many, many more, and you can choose from, you know, any of them, they all have calculators, and they might vary, but Generally speaking, they should all pretty much be similar. Now, obviously for this example, I'm going to use Selleramp and SAS, and you can see that as well. And if you are interested, you, there'll be a link down below that you can get this as well um, and get a free trial on it. It's a really good tool for you. So quite simply, that's the first way, using a sales tool, which we do really like, and it's quite useful. So you can see that there, the 12, 12 per month. And that's this product right here. So it's probably not selling particularly many. Now, the second way we do it is going to be called a website. Now, if I kind of talk to you, there are, should you say, certain websites which offer, should you say, free sales estimations for your products that are sold on Amazon. Now, one of these we've used before is called Jungle Scout Sales Estimator. So here we are in the Jungle Scout free sales estimator, and I think you can pretty much just find it very quickly, resources, and it'll be down here like uh, sales estimator. So very, very simple. You're literally gonna pull in, should you say, three bits of data. So first one, Amazon Marketplace. So for us, we're gonna choose United States of America. Amazon product category. Well, let's go back to this product here. So what we want to do is scroll down. We want to get that bestseller number. So scroll down. And what we got here, we've got the bestseller number. So 244908, and it's in patio, lawn, and garden. So let's kind of go back. So category is in, let's go find that patio, lawn, and garden. Patio, lawn, and garden. And what's the sales rank? That sales rank is 244908. Let's put that in now, 244908. Cool, so that's it, we just put in the details and all we're gonna do now is click Estimate Sales. So it's gonna ask us to enter some details, it's a bit frustrating, sometimes you can get around this, but let's put some details in now and I'll fill that out. Right, details entered, let's click the button. So it's gonna do some interesting calculations and unfortunately it's come back with no valid data on this one. So let's jump over and do another example. So I'm gonna come back to this product here. Remember this Lego product here we've got here? And this one, you know, this is one we think is gonna sell pretty well, it's 900 and something. So let's try that one. So let's have a little look here. So remember we got, this is 975 in Toys and Games. So let's put that in, nine, 975 in the United States again, and in, let's go put that in Toys and Games. Fantastic. Let's scroll up and let's calculate this now. That's gonna say 3,720. But what I will do is I'll quickly jump back up and just to do a comparison for this product as well, let me load up that calculator tool. You can kind of see what that says for this product as well. So right here, this is seller ramp. And here you get it saying 7,000, or sorry, 4,743. So we've got a bit of a variance there, but still both of them showing a lot of sales. Very good. Now, the third way we do calculation or another tool we use, and it's a paid one, is Keeper. Keeper Chrome extension. Now, the Keeper Chrome extension is a Chrome extension which you can install in off your, your Chrome browser. And the thing about Keeper is not only does it, she say, show you some really good information, but it shows you that information over time 
in a graph, which I think is absolutely incredible. Now, using Shute Keeper is going to give you Shute an in-depth analysis of many different aspects of a product, such as like sales rank and buy box price over the course of time, and you know when Amazon's on and off the listing. So we really like it and we use it all the time. But also as well, it does something called counting the drops. What I can show you now is how you can use this tool to help you do estimations. So let's jump back on the computer and we'll show you Keeper for those two examples. So first things first, let's come back in now. So here we are back into this Lego product. And if you just scroll down, and what we've got here, and it's already installed, is this section down here. This is called the Keeper Chrome extension. So it kind of adds in some, what should say, information into the web page. Now, if we come down to the bottom here, it's got this toys and games section. It's got this 599 drops per month. So it's saying right now on this graph, and if I just have it here, this is the sales rank. See that green line? Over the course of the last, I think it's like average over the course of the last 90 days, it says it down the bottom here, average number of times a relevant sales rank drop, e.g. from 1,000 down to 500, occurred per month based on the last 90 days. So the average over the last 90 days is 599 drops. Now, the other thing which I will just read down the bottom there, you can see it, is sales rank drops indicate sales, so each drop may correspond to any number of units sold. If the rank is very good, e.g. five, products must be bought consistently um, just to keep its sales rank. So the absence of any drops does not indicate that the product does not sell. So what does that mean? Well, if it doesn't, if it's really good, like one, and it's been one for a long time, it might not have drops, but actually it's selling really fast. So if you are seeing that really low, just be mindful. Now, the final thing, which I'll just highlight there, and it does say at the bottom, but I think we need to highlight this is say, if the number of drops is interpreted as a sales indicator, that's what we're doing, sales velocity, one should consider that the real sales volume is likely to be higher, not lower. So think about this right now, this is saying 599 drops per month, and then our tool is saying 4,743, and then obviously Amazon sales estimator is saying 3,720. So what you can see is that Keeper's really far off, you know, 600 for example, versus a couple of thousand on the other ones. And that's something to consider, that the Keeper drop method is really good, but it does struggle when it's it's a very high for selling item. Let's have a look at the same keeper drop method over onto the first product. So here we are, this first product we looked at, and if we scroll up, you can see the keeper drop method here. And again, this is saying twelve per month. And remember, you've got no data from uh, you know, should we say from um, the free sales estimator? But this is saying thirteen drops per month. So they're pretty on point. Both of those two are pretty, you know, the same. So that kind of shows you that in slower sales velocities, the keeper drop method is a really good one and that works, but for faster ones, it's not as accurate, should we say. Okay, so today we're talking about sales velocity. And when I started off, I talked about finding deals with great profit and great ROI, but if they don't actually sell, it's not really a good, you know, a good product to buy low and resell high on Amazon. Now, if you want to know, I should say I can find you know, 100 deals every single day with really great profit, great ROI, but no sales. Finding good profits with good ROI, good profit, and good sales, that's a challenge. And that's where we make our real money. Now, I won't lie to you, this is challenging. It is hard work, and that is why I have a team of VAs supporting me in my business as well, and that's how we've been able to grow to seven and six figures. But now, if you are struggling with sourcing, finding deals, it's absolutely fine. And don't you know expect it to be easy, it's not. It's hard, hence why it's profitable. But the one thing which I will say to you is if you want to get started and maybe you're struggling for deals and you haven't got enough time to find them, do check out Fast Track FBA Leads. This is a service I created whereby we've got a team in the USA and a team in the UK. They are finding deals and what they're doing is putting every single one of these deals that they find onto our web portal. What do you do? You come in, you buy tokens, and then you exchange those tokens for the deals that you want. So to be clear, you get to pick and choose the deals that you want. You get to choose which ones you like. You can look at the keeper sales charts, see what's happening with them, see what kind of products they are, see the profit, the ROI. Make sure it matches your criteria. And only when you're happy do you exchange those tokens for deals and also get access to the supplier URL and the Amazon ASIN buy low, resell high on Amazon. Trust me, it's completely game-changing and no one else is doing anything like it. And I think you'll really love it. Have a look at the link down below, Fast Track FBA dash leads. I think it will really change your business and help speed up your sourcing and obviously help make you more money. Check it out today, Fast Track FBA 
slash leads. Right, that leads me nicely onto my third chapter, some top tips for you. Now, first things first, number one is what I'd say is don't rely on any one tool 100%. Now look, I've been selling on Amazon now for you know, five years, as I mentioned. And in these years, I've been using different tools and I'm not saying that you say the tools are not good. No, not at all. But what I am saying, there are times when the tools make an error or maybe they give you kind of say data which seems a bit off. They're all built by humans and we all make mistakes. The top tip for you is always to say, look at one tool and then compare the data from the other one. You know, if you're looking at like, should we say, the, the calculator tool and you see the sales, estimated sales is really, really high and you're looking at the keeper going, hmm, that doesn't look right, then ask some questions, maybe go back to the developers and just double check it. So just always make sure you're double checking the information using a range of tools because that's going to obviously save you from bad mistakes when there are mistakes. And trust me, it does happen. Now, the second top tip I'll share with you is what is the best sales rank? Now, if you ask me what the best sales rank is, and, and basically, I generally say, like, you've got to be a bit blindful. So as a general rule of thumb in the UK, we talk about pretty much anything below 100,000, we're pretty happy with. And that's what we source in our business. Now, in the USA, anything below about 250,000 sales rank, we're pretty happy with that. But the one thing I said, that's just a very rough guide. And there are lots of opportunities you can make it maybe in the UK 120,000 whereby there's less competition maybe not selling so fast it's still profitable and it does sell enough but you know in the USA it might be the case that you're finding some great products you know even slightly higher than 250. For you what I'd really look at is whenever you're doing these calculations is sales rank tells you a good guide towards sales velocity but when you're looking at sales velocity don't forget to factor in the competition because if you're not factoring in the competition like we said at the beginning if it's still selling like five sales a month that sounds great but but if there's 500 other sellers on the listing, you're not going to get a look in for a couple of years. So do factor in the competition. And that works both ways. So should we say too much competition is bad, but also as well, sales aren't great and there's no competition. But hey, if it's super profitable and it sells a bit, I'll probably take it. So don't just necessarily look at that in isolation, look at the whole picture. Now, what I will say is that she say estimating sales is super important when sourcing products to sell online you know, on Amazon. Now, if you want to know how to she say source products online and obviously check the sales estimation as well, what I'll do is I'll leave a video around here of my complete guide of how to source products online to sell on Amazon. Check that out. I think you're going to love it. Now, hopefully you've liked this video. If you have, give me a big thumbs up. And hey, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button down below. But for myself, Thomas Parkinson from Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.